This is the SF Productions Podcast Network. Good evening and welcome to another exciting episode of Vast Wasteland. Up here in the attic. Comet, it went up. There's nothing to watch. <laughs> Everything's 3D horror bit today. I remember back when I was out your age, you used to get the old TV sets, no satellite hookups or anything, just took our signals out of the air. But wasn't that dangerous? Well, that was, of course, uh, before the uh, Surgeon General found a link between uh, TV signals and cancer. That was before your time. Remember some old 2D shows, though? Uh, some were even in black and white. Wow! Of course, that was uh, before President Turner put that in false colorization law through in the 20s. Our show's been really boring. They weren't even interactive. Well, don't be so sure about that. There were some great shows back then. Oh, wait a minute. Let me look at this. Mm. Ooh, what? what's that? Oh, it's called a VCR. <laughs> Uh, see, back before all the video was put directly into computer memory in the com net, people used to tape shows. Uh, let me see. Uh, oh, there's, there's a tape already in here. Let me let me hook this up here. Let me see what we got. Uh, oh, ooh, oh, damn radiation. <laughs> Come back with us to the 60s and 70s, the dwelling place of the lost generation. An era whose heroes, role models, and very lives were molded and formed by weekly installments of favorite television programs. Welcome to the place your parents didn't understand. Welcome to the vast wasteland. Welcome, Welcome home. exciting episode of Vast Wasteland. I'm your host, Mark Schmidbauer, along with Wilbur Neal and Marty Wiley. We're here to talk about 60s and 70s television. And tonight, it's a very exciting episode. It's Jeannie versus Samantha. Who would win in a fight? But first, I want to tell you, our, uh, our address here at Vast Wasteland is, of course, Box 15, 1526, Columbus, Ohio, 43215. And believe it or not, yes, we, we went into our... Uh, voluminous mailbag and we actually got a letter we're stunned <laughs> and it's more, we uh, dipped it in water first and here it is yes a mr. J Cavender of Bryce Ohio writes Him dear Jay vast Cavender. wastelanders I am writing to tell you how much I enjoy watching your show I like your choice of topics and remembering the good shows of the past along with you some of my, my favorite topics you recently discussed were Christmas shows of the 60s and 70s and the detective shows. I have a passion somewhat similar to yours. I'm a B-movie fan. I love low-budget films primarily from the 70s and 80s currently available in the TV, VHS, and drive-in markets. I would estimate that I've seen at least 250 or so Bs within the last few years. Like TV shows of the past and present, B-movies have also stood the test of time. After all, the blob, the thing, and even The Little Shop of Horrors were originally B-movies before their big budget remakes in the 80s. It's interesting to watch a lot of the TV shows today and appreciate today's production budgets. Take the original Star Trek, for example, to Star Trek The Next Generation. They really stretched it all far back in those days. 
If you're looking to explore some new topics on Vast Wasteland, how about the life and times of Ronnie Howard, a child actor to box Great office idea. movie director, TV commercials that made me what I am today, and superheroes from the comic book to the TV, a historical perspective. Keep up the good work. I hope to see Vast Wasteland on ACTV for many seasons to come. Even the reruns. Sincerely, Mr. J. Cavender. That's M. M. J. I'm sorry. Oh, M. J. Cavender. Thank you, M. J. And and for uh, uh, sending in such a wonderful letter. We're going to send you absolutely nothing. So, <laughs> but because this is a nonprofit deal, we don't we don't send out fabulous prize packages. But you get the honor to know that you were actually uh, your name was mentioned on ACTV. But uh, <laughs> give the vast wasteland wave. <laughs> <laughs> Anyways, uh, we do we do appreciate it. By the way, uh, we've already done a commercial show and a superhero show. We may have to start rerunning some of these fine, uh, some of the classic Vast Wasteland episodes. But the Ronnie Howard idea is really good. The Ronnie Howard, we may we we may, may well do one uh, that idea. So thank you very much, M. J. Cavender. Well, anyways, uh, also wanted to tell you for. Those who, uh, if you send in your letter and you want to see the show when it's actually, uh, when we read your letter on the air, it's uh, Tuesdays at 6, Wednesdays at 10, and Thursdays at 3 p.m. on ACTV Cable 21. So send in those letters and cross your fingers. Fingers. <laughs> the next person, the next uh, one we read might be yours. You've got to write first. That's You've right. You've got to write. Right? <laughs> For us to read it. We're not mind readers here. Well, anyways. We're letter readers. Speaking <laughs> <laughs> Big and it takes so little to make us happy. Oh, yeah, we're, we're stunned, personally. Well, <laughs> so, on uh, to other mystic things, like Samantha versus Jeannie. Let's see what we got here. Well, what do you got here, Wilbur, down there? Well, by Other than the theme. That, uh, <laughs> that'd be which thing we got started here in 64 with the black and white episode. The one shown on Nick and Knight right now. Mm -hmm. That's right. And personally, I feel that... Uh, I like I like Dick York better as oh. um, the better oh, Darren. Yeah. Oh, there's no Darren question. Better, much better I'm than Dick Sargent because Dick Sargent always looked lost. I mean, Dick York, not that he didn't look lost, but he he looked lost with a purpose. Right. <laughs> he looked confused. And co he looked like confused and constipated, yeah, lost Dick and Sargent stuff. Dick looked like, why am I here? I, <laughs> I can well, I, I could be doing something. I could be <laughs> a detective show or something. Where did Cutting I pick up my chair or something? <laughs> why am I here? <laughs> I just don't think they had the chemistry that uh, that uh, Dick York and and and, and Barbara, um, Dick York and Elizabeth, Elizabeth Montgomery. Thank you so much. <laughs> Elizabeth Montgomery had it. It just didn't work as well. And then um, when you finally got into the color ones, it's like boom, oh color. Right. And it was, of course, it was about the same time. I guess we got a color TV, so it's like, hey, this is great. <laughs> We get a color TV, and, and it's like we wondered if the show was always in color. You know, it's it's it's, it's just one of those wild, and wacky and things. Yeah, oh, all what that needs. and all its hideous <laughs> glory. <laughs> <laughs> all the crags and lines, by God, and that lovely green eyeshadow. Yeah, <laughs> and her diaphanous uh, robe thing yeah. she wore mm -hmm. with the high collar. I always liked the collars. The collar was <laughs> like the big point for me. There was a nurse like at the doctor's office. That look like her. Ooh. And talk like her too. Ooh. And her hair up in the in the. She no, in the hair the wasn't or? up though. <laughs> okay. Yeah, okay. <laughs> but but. Hey, could they ever remember your name? <laughs> <laughs> no, she uh, knew me. Dorwood. <laughs> Dorwood. <laughs> <laughs> she only called him Darren once, and that was when Tabitha was being born. Mm -hmm. Remember that? That was funny. Well, let's see. So uh, certainly, uh, Bewitched had its uh, uh, just a score of uh, anchor, uh, aunts and uncles and cousins and. Uh, <laughs> Yep, Aunt you Clara, <laughs> Uncle Arthur, <laughs> Dr. Bombay. Ah! <laughs> <laughs> Which was like, let's see, Agnes Morehead played Andorra. Right. Who played Dr. Bombay? Bernard Fox. Bernard Fox. The famous okay. Bernard Fox, also, of course, Colonel Crittenden from Hogan's Heroes. Okay. Who was the lady that played Aunt Clara? Aunt Clara. Well, we have it right here. Marion Lorne. Okay. Who did Paul Lynn play? Yeah. Uncle, Uncle Arthur. Arthur. Uncle oh, Arthur. Yeah. Zagazoogie, 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 Zim. <laughs> and we'd never guess who played Sarita. Oh, no, oh. never, ever. Who, in my opinion, was probably the most real. I mean, if, if a person had powers like that, they would probably be more like Sarita than, than like Samantha. Samantha. Oh, yes. yeah, there's no question. I mean, 
Oh, Sammy. But <laughs> I think the whole, the whole point, the whole concept of the show is that, that uh, someone with incredible powers like that would give them up to, to marry an, an advertising executive. I don't think so. <laughs> I don't think so. I don't work, think so. <laughs> for Larry, you son of a gun, Tate. <laughs> Cotton top. <laughs> no, I don't think so. That's just not... That's just not real. Just not there. It's well, not, it's, it's the idea that you have these powers, but you've got to... You, you, the, the, um, what am I trying to say here? The, the, the better part of having things is knowing when not to use them or something like that. Well, there's, yeah. there's a big thing in uh, one of the books I have about uh, the fact that, um, I'm trying to remember the, you know, its name, uh, the producer, uh, uh, William Asher, who was, of course, Elizabeth Montgomery's husband um, at the time of the show, was uh, saying that it was, he was saying how, you know, it was showing conservative values that a woman would give up anything just to, just to uh, have, to get her man and all this. Which, I'm like, eh, I think, I think you're pushing it, bud. <laughs> well, this was the 60s, yeah. though. This was the 60s, and well, the times have changed. Uh, yeah, but even even then, that was a pretty silly attitude. Uh, but, um, so let's see, who else do we have? Uh, of course, uh, who can forget Gladys Kravitz? <laughs> I two of those. Yeah. There were two, Alice just like there were two Darrens. Yeah, and, the, and Sandra Gould, although I think... I haven't seen a Sandra Gould uh, Kravitz for a while because, of course, Nick at Night showing all the ones with Alice Pierce, uh, all the early ones. And I just liked her a lot better. I thought she was a much better Gladys mm -hmm. Kravitz. And it's like her husband never noticed that she yeah. changed. Yeah. It's like <laughs> Samantha never noticed that Darren changed. And right. One of those weird things. Yeah. Just go on. And Dora Not just, like, on. threw a spell, like, between one of the seasons that changed the appearance of uh, Darren and, and then threw a spell so no one would notice. Flint. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Right. <laughs> Something like that. Either that or... Actually, uh, uh, aficionados of the show know that Dick York actually was having, like, various back problems at the time, and he finally had to quit the show because of all the prat falls and stuff he had to do during the show. It was hurting him, and, uh, um, in fact, I don't know, is he still alive? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah, he's still alive. But, I mean, the pieces he was making were for real. Ew. Yeah. <laughs> that's, a, that's too bad. Yeah, so, um, let's see, we had, um... Uh, Oh. No, her father was, um, uh, what's his name, Shakespearean actor, um, uh, Oh, her, oh, uh, her Maurice. Son. Maurice, yeah. Yeah. Well, what's his real name? Uh, uh, actually, it's Maurice. Maurice Evans. Maurice Evans, <laughs> yeah. He went on to be an ape on Planet of the Apes, you know. Mm -hmm. He was Zaya, Dr. Zaya. But... Well, there's a lot oh, of... Oh, Tabitha. Well, the, a lot oh. of doddering ants. There's, uh, well, you had Clara, and you and also Clara, had, yeah. um, oh, who was the other... The one, Esmeralda, Esmeralda, the uh, the shy witch played by, of course, the, the popular Alice Ghostly. Well, there was an Aunt Hagatha, too. It was like a big, older woman, I remember. I think Very was, pushy. She was yeah, the pushy. Yeah, she would. Yeah. But Esmeralda yeah, she was, like, was kind of... Clara would show up sometimes together. Right. But. And uh, Esmeralda was just very shy, and, and her powers were really starting to fade, and every time you spoke harshly to her, she'd disappear, and or she'd, she'd fade. But she'd leave something there, like her... The handbag, right? Or something like that, hat or something. Right. But she wasn't uh, always, always gone. We had, uh, let's see. Uh, oh, of course, uh, well, one of my favorite characters. <laughs> I, I love how they how they reference it in here. The drunk Darren meets at the bar. <laughs> Dick, Dick Wilson. <laughs> okay. <laughs> the drunk he meets at the, the bar. bar. Never had a name. Just kind of every time he'd come in and say, he'd get drunk and tell the guy, oh. You know, my wife's a witch, and is like, oh, they all are after a while. <laughs> you know, that, that standard bit. <laughs> well, you know, I'm uh, not a picky <laughs> man. <laughs> <laughs> so, well, so you had uh, really, uh, you can really look at the uh, the Dick York versus the uh, Dick Sargent years as the really the decline of the show. Yeah. I mean, the show was really starting to wear thin. They brought Tabitha in, really, to kind of jumpstart the show. And then they brought in Adam to jumpstart the show. Well, and, you know, and by and by the end, they were just like, whatever big fad, like like every other show, they had an episode where they had a, a rock group. I'm sure they did at some point. Well, they, Serena at one time did a um, a song while she was doing the, doing the thing there. And that was... But they'd have, they always had some, they all, I mean, every sitcom that was on the air when, around the time the monkeys were on the air, say, <laughs> was, 
was just almost every other sitcom would have an episode where it was like, hey, look, you know, it's Jan and Dean, or it's, uh, you know, the Little Rascal, or whatever. The, I'm not Little Rascals. The, um... the Young Rascals? Hmm? The Young the rascals. rascals, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Tay! <laughs> Thank you, Norgay. Thank you, <laughs> Not those, but, um, so, uh, let's see, we had, uh, who else here? Uh, well, Dr. Bombay, we mentioned him, and, uh, so, so certainly, uh, there's a, if, if you consider the concept of Samantha versus Jeannie, who would win in a fight, certainly Samantha's got a lot of, got a lot of power on her side, just, but, just a lot of but, but, on, but, but, you know what? Jeannie had a mean streak, a naughty streak, an impish streak, Empish let's say. Streak. And she could also call, like, from back to past, what, her father? Mm -hmm. The great big Jeannie guy. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So I think she had, like, a far more ancient and mystical sources. Well, that's true. I mean, Samantha can only trace her stuff back to probably, what, uh, Salem or so. Yeah. Or Jeannie could go back thousands of years. Born. Jeannie was thousands and thousands That's of right. years old. She was, uh, what is it? I think she was born, I think I read in here somewhere, born like April 1st, 64 B.C. or something. <laughs> like they had that calendar yeah. then. Yeah. <laughs> right. <laughs> so, but uh, didn't have nearly as many, uh, as many relatives. Uh, That's true. You basically had, did. basically had... In, in uh, the the Serena <laughs> yeah. show, Jeannie too, according to this, her sister, a Jeannie also, also played, of course, by Barbara Eden. And um, other than that, you really had uh, like her mother, who wasn't really all that powerful, if I remember correctly, and uh, maybe Haji. Ha I mean, you could call it Haji or Habib, one of those. Um, and uh, the Blue Jin. Yeah. Or the gin? How do you pronounce that? It's gin. Gin? Well, the D is silent. Oh, okay. Duh. Duh. <laughs> I don't know. Okay. So, but, uh... But you got the same stupid idea that here is a female with all these wonderful powers who's going to make an absolute fool and ass of herself for some worthless man. But in, in this case, she didn't have nearly as much of a choice when you really think about it because... Well, it was going back to the man. Right. He was he was in charge because he found well, the bottle. Well, yeah, because he found anybody who finds a bottle and opens then it. He let he, me out of that bottle. But, I'll be gone. <laughs> but in the first episode, they make it clear that he wants her to just go off and live her own life, but she voluntarily jumps back in the in the bottle and, and goes back with him. But she stayed with him. Yeah. That's not no. <laughs> that wouldn't happen. <laughs> and then what he finally got, she finally got uh, sick of the idea of her breaking up his little romances and things, so mm -hmm. he finally decides to marry her. Right. <laughs> gave her that rock. Remember the, diamond. the diamond? It gave her the huge diamond. I mean, it was even close up on TV. What is supposed to be like one of the biggest diamonds another Something. TV character ever yeah. gave another TV character? But certainly, the two two of my my favorite all time uh, TV characters we have. Roger Healy, Captain Roger Healy, Bill Daly, mm -hmm. and Dr. Alfred Bellows, Hayden Rourke. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Dr. Bellows. And, of course, Tony was J.R., who is Larry Hagman. Larry Hagman, yeah. <laughs> so, Son of aren't Mary they, on, Martin, aren't they yeah. on Dallas together now? Um, they were for a while there. They had Barbara Eden on Dallas. Yeah, oh, yeah, they did. Playing That's somebody. right. That's, I, I, I think <laughs> I remember the, the ads for it was like, um, they said uh, it was like, Hagman versus Eden, this time no one's dreaming, or something like that. <laughs> <laughs> so. And well, the um, you gotta look at Bewitched had like a, a year-long jump head start on, on the Genie oh, sure. thing. Since it started, Bewitched started in 64. And, uh, and it went on until 72. When it started wow. in 65. 65 to 70. 65 to 70, so right. it had like a year-long head start and then a two-year Aftermath or right. whatever. I mean, they they got smart with Jeannie and said, "Well, we we've done all we can do." <laughs> this but is even, no, this is they, even more. They, they, actually, they just, yeah, that's true. Both of them were pretty much done. Yeah, Jeannie they, Jeannie had the, at least the the courage to say, "That's enough. We're done. We we've, we've we've beaten this project to death." Cranking out <laughs> another. <laughs> We went to like eh, I was no. when they decided to have Adam. They was in that last two years and they cranking out some more. Well, the big, and also the big thing there was the fact that uh, Bewitched was on ABC that had precious few hits at the time. You know, <laughs> which was like, 
you know, we're not going to let you go unless, you know, we're going to pay you as much as possible. Yeah, yeah, well, no, this okay. Well, Jeannie was Bewitch on ABC. Went on, Bewitch went on into a cartoon form, didn't it? Um, well, now, I do see. remember the Samantha character showing up on the Flintstones. On Flintstones. Yeah, yeah. But now, didn't, didn't it go into a Saturday morning? Was that just Tabitha? It, well, Tabitha, they had a... Let me see. God. 76, they, they had a... Let me see. I've got it right here. Let me see. Tabitha. That was the spinoff in 1977. Yeah. Uh, which was uh, uh, Lisa Hartman in one of her first roles playing playing, <laughs> playing the same Tabitha. <laughs> playing Tabitha basically. And other than I mean the only char characters that went on were Adam and uh, a few appearances by Dr. Bombay. Other than that, Did nobody from the other according to this, nobody from the original from the original series. Okay, but didn't G didn't one of them go on to be a cartoon? Well, there? they there was a genie. Genie did yes. go yeah. on to be a yes. cartoon. Yes, yes, I got that here. Let's see. Oh, if I can find it. Uh, and she had a big dumb genie with her. It's like she was young. She was a teenager. Right. And she had a big dumb genie with her. Babu. Babu. <laughs> Babu <laughs> played by the immortal Joe Besser. Uh, <laughs> really? <laughs> yeah. Okay. <laughs> So, uh, yeah, this and, uh, says, unlike Barbara Eden's portrayal of a genie whose powers are evoked by crossing her hands over her chest and blinking her eyes, the animated genie's powers are contained in her hair, which she wears as a ponytail. Yeah, and they kind of go, oh, yeah. go, zing! <laughs> yeah. Well, that'd be handy. Yeah. <laughs> when she would always ride around on her carpet or something with her arms folded and just let her hair go, whoop, whoop, boom, and yeah. hit things. With the big, with Babu. Yeah. <laughs> Just a, like a big baby Huey kind of genie. That's, that's how I remember him. He had a little little, little mm -hmm. fez, you know. Mm -hmm. Let's see, so um, balloony pants. Yeah. Balloony pants. <laughs> Hammer pants. <laughs> <laughs> Hammer pants. <laughs> I think that's where you got the idea for this style here. Ooh. 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 <laughs> so thrilled by I Dream of Genie that he had to wear the pants. <laughs> Watched it as a kid. <laughs> I must have those pants. <laughs> Someday I would be famous to wear pants it's just, just like her. Like <laughs> <laughs> oh, well, well, MC Hammer doesn't watch the show, so we don't have to worry about it. <laughs> right. Yeah. Well, let's see. We uh, one more thing. It was, uh, of course, the we haven't seen. Well, I probably will never see because uh, Elizabeth Montgomery is now a big time TV actress. You know, I only do drama now, but. Yeah. Uh, but we did see that I Dream of yeah. Genie 15 years later thing. Yeah, and that was like a, a waste almost, wasn't basically it? Basically, because Larry Hagman said, I'm doing Dallas, sorry, can't he do it. it. He did Wayne the, he did Wayne Rogers. Rogers. He did the, the Mike Nesbeth. I'm too busy to be in, <laughs> involved in this darn thing. Go find somebody else. You think you can do it without me? Go ahead. <laughs> they basically, they, they wasted the talents of, um, of uh, Hayden Rourke. Uh, yeah, because he's only in like two scenes, if I remember correctly. Uh, you know, it's like because he's now retired. Major Bell is retired by that point, and uh, and Roger is also in like three or four scenes. It's like these are the best people on the show. Really? As far as I'm concerned, yikes! I think Roger ever... needed the work. Well, yeah. yeah, and of course we have to mention that was the, the first time that she that as that character we got to see. Her navel. Ooh, Ooh. Yes. Oh, we couldn't see. This, of course, a big thing on the old show that you never saw her navel because the censor said, "Ooh, this is too horrible for you know people." To <laughs> too watch. horrible for <laughs> prime <laughs> time TV. Oh, no, <laughs> not a navel, not a <laughs> so, navel. So, no. so it was either covered by a veil, or they said in some in some cases they actually used like this flesh col colored plug that they put <laughs> in it. <laughs> So you couldn't tell it was there. Yeah, they could have stuck a jewel or yeah. something. Yeah. Yeah. Put yeah, that ring that he gave yeah. her in there. <laughs> Why not? Oh, well, I don't know. So we've got, uh, so we've got that. We've got uh, what else? I'm bewitched. Um, I don't know. Like I had the personal experience of like actually kind of being close to Barbara Eden oh, when they taped Harp or when they filmed Harper Valley PTA at my high school. Ooh. So. It was like, she was like a real unapproachable person. Why does this not surprise me? <laughs> I did get to meet Annette Fabre and Ronnie Cox and Ron Masak, all people from TV. They were very nice people. Mm -hmm. Barbara Eden, you could not find her to talk to her. We had to sneak a photographer in to get a picture of her on the set. <laughs> she just did not want to have anything to do with us high school children. 
Amazing. So she probably needed the work to do the I Dream of Jeannie return thing. Well, um, one other thing about uh, I Dream of Jeannie was the, was the fact that, uh, considering how the whole thing, the whole naval thing, was the fact that this was produced by Sidney Sheldon, who later went on to do all these, all these really lush and uh, lascivious uh, miniseries. You know, uh, There's plenty of TNA. Yeah, and books and stuff. Navels and everything yeah. else. Yeah, <laughs> anything else you want to show, <laughs> or you can show, even today. But um, really amazing that that uh, that uh, something that was so oh this is horrible went on to do something like that. Well, you mentioned there that uh, the Barbara Eden. I mean, excuse me. Uh, Elizabeth, Elizabeth Montgomery. Montgomery. Boy, why can't I get that name? <laughs> It just doesn't roll off the tongue like Barbara Eden. Yeah. Elizabeth Montgomery, there's too many <laughs> syllables. Elizabeth Montgomery. Uh, she was married to uh, <laughs> William Asher, right? Yeah. Okay, I have here that Barbara Eden was married to Michael and Sarah, who was also an actor. Michael and Sarah, one man, three names. Michael and Sarah. <laughs> <laughs> he was <laughs> stupid. He was? Yeah. Oh, 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 Barbara, Barbara, Barbara Eden was. Barbara Eden was married That's to right. Michael okay. and Sarah, yeah. Who, who later was actually on the show, if I remember correctly. Well, he might have been a genie or something. I think on he was there. he was the blue gin or that, whatever. That that was okay. Okay, I think I I believe. Well, that what was. good is it if you have a TV show if you can't employ your family? That's right. <laughs> That's what it. Michael and Sarah, and Sarah as the blue gin. Okay. The most powerful and most feared of genies. Wow, well, well, see, <laughs> hey. Mm. <laughs> see, she just called him up for meant to be wiped out. Oh, I don't know. Yeah. Uh, he's, it's like she, Samantha probably had more more backup, I guess. Right. If, as if far it, as character. I, I, I agree. If it, if it was a straight Samantha versus Jeannie, Jeannie would take her. Yeah. But Jeannie would if take it was the, Samantha's family the versus Jeannie. The team versus yeah. the I do a Jeannie team. I, I still put then, my money on the Jeannie oh, family. Oh, I don't know. Yeah. Well, that's true. The Jeannie team, they've got Ted Cassidy. Yeah, they got Ted Cassidy. He's big. Habib as Jeannie's sister's master. <laughs> and he went on, let me see, he did a genie thing in uh, that, um, whatever that Huck Finn show, Huck, Huckleberry, Huck, oh, that Huck part, Finn part thing, of that, yeah. the Fantastic World of Hanna-Barbera or whatever. Yeah, kind of like that, that, yeah. Let me see here. Part animation, part yeah. live mm -hmm. action, he was like a genie in that, because oh, he <laughs> did the, uh, the Indian Joe, the Indian Joe thing, and he went on to be like a genie, it was, it was wild. It was wild. It was wild. But uh, I was gonna, <laughs> I was, was, I was, I was gonna re read up on all the Ted Cassidy stuff, and yet there's, I can't because there's just so many references to him. Maybe, maybe he's our best bet for our next uh, <laughs> <laughs> big Ted Cassidy show. The big Ted, <laughs> Ted, 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 Ted Cassidy. Ted Cassidy, Richard Keel. <laughs> <laughs> the big show. <laughs> well, let's see. What else do we have on the shows? Um, you have anything else there? I think Samantha was too nice. Too nice? Two minutes. Oh, we're being told two minutes. <laughs> I thought he flashed me to peace. Yeah. I like, yeah. I always liked cool, uh, <laughs> I always liked Jeannie's, Jeannie's bottle. I thought that was like a neat idea. I used to have a little tiny one. A little what? tiny bottle that looked like Jeannie's bottle. I wasn't no Jeannie in it, though. Yeah. Something but air. Sometimes water. Of course, there was, there was a big thing. You know, all you had to do, and, and it seemed like it was easy to do, like we were talking about Samantha versus Jeannie. All you have to do is trick Jeannie to get into her bottle, which seemed to be darn easy to do because it happened all the time. It's like, uh, Jeannie, can you go in your bottle and get something? There we go. Okay, you're not going anywhere. But <laughs> unless I think, somebody I think else let her out. Instead of having an out and out fight, right? It'll be an out and out. Yeah. Well. <laughs> I mean, Jeannie probably the, the battle Samantha. rages on. Probably uh, zap Samantha into that. the bottle. <laughs> yeah. And did they have a thing in Bewitched where like um, only um. The witch that cast the spell could break it. Wasn't yeah. It? Oh, yeah. That's, yeah, that's it seemed like standard. they kind of like went back on that sometimes. Yeah. If I don't you, think if they went in the, in the early shows. Right. They they went I mean, back on thing, it again. Yeah. But then later on they went. A big thing about it. if Endora threw a spell, nobody else could break it. And if uh, Uncle Arthur like threw a, I don't know, like a. No wacky powder prank, spell. you know. <laughs> that's, that's only he could. powder spell or something. <laughs> we, we don't know. Well, anyways, uh, actually, it looks like we're just about out of here uh, for Vast Wasteland. Next time, uh, we're going to do, we think, our, our next big retrospective. We've yet to pick somebody, but... Uh, uh, We've got it ideas. Won't be, it'll be better than Burgess Meredith. So... <laughs> <laughs> That was just enough said there. <laughs> enough said. said. <laughs> so, for all of us here at Vast Wasteland, we'll see you next time. 
Tschüss.